أناجي الحق في ليل لهي من أصدق النجوى وأدعو الله من قلب سليم يطلب التقوى أناجي الحق في ليل لهي من أصدق النجوى وأدعو الله من قلب سليم يطلب التقوى Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum. And welcome to another edition of Perspective. My name is Faisal Patel. There is a clear understanding in the traffic environment that the road carnage cannot continue and that more needs to be done towards ensuring the safety of all road users across the country. Many South Africans will be travelling across our beautiful country to their respective holiday destinations in their cars. After a long year, many people look forward to some rest and relaxation to revitalise the mind, body and soul. In their enthusiasm to get to holiday destinations, the rules and regulations of the road are generally ignored, which have deadly consequences. Safety on the road must become a top priority, not only during the festive season, when so many lives are lost, so many accidents occur, and so much carnage. This cannot be done merely by government and traffic officials, but will require cooperation with the private sector, NGOs, community activists, and private citizens like you and myself. Arrive Alive was started by one man in 2003, was determined to make a difference. Johan Jong, an attorney who is based in the Free State, started Arrive Alive in his own capacity after losing his mother and friend in separate car accidents. And tonight, it's an absolute pleasure to have Johan with me in studio. Good evening, Johan. Much appreciated and welcome to Perspective. Faisal, thanks a lot. It's nice to be here. Absolutely. First of all, what is Arrive Alive all about? Yeah, Faisal, I, um, perhaps we must emphasize that the Department of Transport, uh, that Drive Alive is more of a name of a road safety strategy managed by the Department of Transport. I started the online initiative in 2003. Uh, I studied law first and, and by accident actually I came across the domain arrivealive.com. At that stage developed in America by a guy with a name Jack Church. His son Robert died in a drinking and driving accident and he wanted to influence the youth in America not to drink and drive. And having lost my mum when I was two years old in a, in a road crash, I thought to myself what are we doing in South Africa on the online side? Having lectured, I thought that uh, we can create a information portal from where people can find the information, where people can benefit from the information and make them safer on the road. So that is where we started in 2003 with the online initiative. At that stage, there was no Facebook, Twitter, other social media platforms. Mm -hmm. So everything expanded from, them, uh, from, from uh, that stage. And we had to do a lot more on the social media side. What, what I envisaged was that nobody should be able to say that he did not know. If you want to search for information, you must be able to find it. If you want to search for information or advice on how to overtake another vehicle, or uh, why it's important not to overload, or what are the threats of making a U-turn, you must be able to find it with the click of a button. So the Arrival Live online in initiative was developed as an information portal from where people uh, should be able to find information, from uh, where they must be able to make informed decisions and to make them safer on the roads. Okay. Now we are obviously now in the festive season. Um, obviously there's a whole lot of campaigns that possibly Arrive Alive will be implementing. What are some of the road safety campaigns that you got planned uh, for the festive season and coming the new year as well? Yeah, Faisal, this time of year uh, we need to take into consideration that there are a lot of people travelling across South Africa and we tra travel vast distances. So usually the message that will go out is around driver fatigue, uh, for people to inform them that they need to rest if they are tired, uh, also for people to remain patient on the roads, not to take chances. 
with increased traffic volumes and traffic congestion, people often take chances. And we always say, you know, the risk takers are the collision makers. So for people to be patient and and not to overtake or take chances uh, that may result in a road crash. Also, around the festive season, often there's a lot of people, uh, unfortunately, intoxicated on the roads, not only drivers, but also pedestrians. So we need to inform people to become more defensive on the roads. So I think a lot of the campaigns will be around those themes. Also, the overloading of vehicles. We know a lot of people are traveling cross borders, traveling to go see uh, family members, especially our migrant laborers. Uh, so uh, I think it's very important to, to emphasize size of those themes. Okay, now obviously, you know, during the festive season, we see an increase in road accidents, pedestrian accidents, um, you know, people like you mentioned, the fatigue mm. of driving long distances. Sometimes people don't have the affordability to fly mm. to their destinations. Mm. Some of the statistics of road fatalities uh, over the past year or past years? Yeah, Faisal, it's, it's not good statistics. Uh, unfortunately, we have not received from the Road Traffic Management Corporation yet the full year statistics 2012-2013, but we know from 2011 that we talk about of 14,000 a year dying on our roads. That's about 40 road deaths a day. Uh, one thing I think is, what is important for us to emphasize is that we make a lot about fatalities, but we have very good emergency medical services and a lot of the people may not die, but they may be badly injured on the roads. If we just look at the recent data from the Road Accident Fund and the amount of more than 200 claims made during the to the Road Accident Fund. Now those are for injuries. So the 40 road deaths that we have daily, as bad as that may seem, it's even worse if we consider the amount of people that are permanently disabled, people injured in road crashes. Okay. Now we know that uh, obviously a lot of youngsters, especially when they turn 18, are enthusiastic. They want to drive. There are many new drivers in South Africa every year, every month. We're getting probably a plethora of, mm -hmm. of new drivers. How do we educate them to ensure that we have defensive drivers as opposed to offensive drivers? And I want to, to relate specifically to drivers, especially young drivers that are negligent, mm -hmm. uh, that don't understand the rules of the road, mm -hmm. that uh, tend to be, uh, you know, offensive towards fellow drivers, mm -hmm. maybe on that aspect? Yeah, our young drivers are definitely a, a very uh, risk, high risk group for us. All the car insurance will also, you know, confirm that is why they pay more for the car insurance. Along with uh, the young drivers and the a lack of expertise or lack of experience with driving also comes along uh, often drunk driving, speeding, uh, the need or the desire to impress friends and also they are a group that are not buckled in uh, safely. So it is important for us to, to get the message along to the younger drivers uh, that they must drive within the ability that uh, they must first of all obey the rules of the road, but then also adjust the driving to make it more safer. Uh, to, uh, you know, they may not know uh, in difficult weather conditions, they may not have driven mountain passes, mm. specific difficult roads, they may not have encountered severe uh, rainstorms or wind. Uh, and uh, we need to, to get the defensive driving message across to slow down to, re to reduce your speed, to increase your following distance, and once again, not to take chances. Okay, I want to just go on to that and expound on that particular one. There was a notion many years ago, and I spoke to a friend of mine that says, sometimes the newbie drivers that don't have driver's mm -hmm. licenses tend to be more careful than the ones they do have mm -hmm. for the fear that they might be involved in an accident, they might be get caught, so they mm. will obey the rules mm. to the best availability. What's your yeah. comments on that? It, it's, it's interesting uh, that you mention it. Uh, recently, also internationally, we found that there's a sudden spike in road crashes shortly after a person uh, has received his driving license, whereas your learner driver is a lot more cautious, not only because he has a person next to him, but he, he, he still knows a little bit more his limitations. When the young driver gets his license, he suddenly feels that he is a good driver. And that's where uh, 
the need for for advanced driving, for defensive driving classes and stuff comes in as well. Uh, to instill in these young people's minds the need to drive with inviability. Okay. You are speaking to Johan Jonk, he's from Arrive Alive. We're going to be going for a break and after the break we will continue speaking about road safety, especially during the festive season when so many lives are lost on South Africa's roads. Stay tuned to Perspective. Welcome back to Perspective. This evening we're speaking to Johan Jonk. He's from Arrive Alive. We know that many South Africans will be going across South Africa to various des destinations. Some might fly, some might uh, go by train, but most South Africans, obviously due to some affordability, might use their vehicles, they might find it cheaper, and obviously it's within driving distance as well. But with their traveling also comes a whole lot of dangers, risks, there might be accidents, might not your fault, could be somebody else's, and Johan is here this evening to give us some perspective on how we can ensure that these fatalities are kept to a minimum and that you get your destination as safe as possible. Before the break, we were speaking about advanced driving. Mm -hmm. I did an advanced driving course with racing mm -hmm. drivers, Grant McCleary, I'm sure you know they were, and Clint Weston. The course has helped me a lot. Uh, you know, as far as handling the car is concerned, in wet weather conditions, aquaplaning, whatever the case may be, cadence braking mm. for those that don't have ABS. Do you think that uh, advanced driving cores should be part of every driver's exam? Even if not part of a driver exam, I would strongly recommend people to go for the advanced driving courses. I've been on one uh, myself. It is best if you want to experience those things like aquaplaning to experience that in a controlled environment yes. before it is needed in an emergency situation. Uh, also, it gives you a lot more respect for the guys who can actually drive. I remember going on an advanced driving course at Kailami with one of the guys who is involved in motor racing. Yes. And I just realized how much a better experienced driver that guy is mm. than I am. And uh, it, it puts me a little bit in my place as well, you know, not to be too confident on the road. Yes. Now, the one thing that's obviously plaguing South Africans at the moment, especially motorists, is traffic congestion. It seems to be increasing every year. Um, also, I know there's a new initiatives coming out. We have the NTH Express, which obviously caters for people from Indonesia to travel, so you can eliminate about 350 mm. cars a month, according to the person that I spoke to. To ease traffic congestions on South Africa's roads, what solutions do you think that will ease this, this whole situation? It, the traveling distances are becoming not longer, mm. but a time of traveling, sitting one hour, two mm. hours in a car. Any solutions that we can get to easing this congestion? Faisal, with, with road safety, we always say that there are five E's required for road safety. And the first one is engineering. Then we also have education, encouragement, enforcement, which is a very important one. Uh, and evaluation. But engineering is a very important one to ease the congestion and also to ensure, especially on long pedestrian safety, to ensure safe pathways for pedestrians, uh, to build pedestrian bridges, but also to have traffic calming in place. Uh, that's why I always, we always have a question as well on, for instance, speed limits. Yes. And is our speed limits cor correct? Uh, Sometimes I believe 120 kilometers an hour speed limit mm. is perfect. And in some places, 100 kilometers an hour speed limit may still be, or may feel for us more dangerous to drive in. I think we, we guys at Sunro and at uh, our road engineers, I think they are doing the right stuff. Uh, I believe if we will have to put a lot more money mm -hmm. into easing congestion. And unfortunately, the whole ETAL debate goes along with it because somebody has to pay for that. Okay. I know as taxpayers we are paying for it already, <laughs> but there is a definite need for more investment. Also you'll notice that the Department of Transport did a, uh, a study on that and released some results during this year as well. With regards to the amount of roads in South Africa, the road network that needs uh, more money for more maintenance because there is a huge backlog on maintenance 
and uh, that's definitely an issue for traffic congestion as well. Interesting you're speaking about the speed limit on South Africa's roads mm. and uh, this is something and obviously it's not intended for those that can mm. afford those those massive vehicles but if you have a BMW or you mm. have a GTI or one of these supercars mm. even an Aston Martin or Ferrari mm. these things go up to 300 kilometers mm. an hour does it really make sense to have those cars in South Africa when we can't exceed the speed limit mm. of 120? What's the point? Yeah, no, Faisal, I agree. I must say on the speed limit side, even though I've been doing the Arrival Life website for 11 years now, I sometimes get frustrated uh, as well. I had to pay a 900 rand fine uh, at Three Sisters for doing 122 kilometers an hour where the speed limit suddenly became 100. And that's frustrating for me because I know that, uh, okay, I did not reduce my speed fast enough. There's mm -hmm. a short section of about three kilometers or two kilometers where the speed goes down from 120 to 100 kilometers an hour. I think we should place the focus on specific hazard uh, areas and high accident zones. Uh, around schools, for instance, I can fully understand that we need to reduce speed more to the 50 km an hour mark around our schools. On the open road, uh, I still, I'm in agreement, and perhaps I may not say yes. it coming from Arrival Live website, but we need to have more visible enforcement of moving violations than just speeding. Mm -hmm. a, a thing that, that often frustrates some of the road safety practitioners in South Africa is that you drive down, let's say, to Cape Town, 1,400 yes. kilometers an hour. Uh, you don't get stopped once, but you may get six fines 30 days later. Yes. I think it's important to recognize and uh, the fact that if you are not stopped at a traffic block or at a roadblock, mm -hmm. you may be unlicensed, you may be driving an unroadworthy vehicle, you may be driving an overloaded vehicle. And we need to, to enforce those violations as well, and not just the speeding aspect of okay. it. Now, road rage is becoming a recurring mm -hmm. problem. We know that. Uh, a few months back, we saw the altercation between the Porsche driver and another motorist. A motorcycle is shot in Randburg. Mm -hmm. Are South Africans generally angry people? I mean, are they stressed? Mm -hmm. What's contributing to this road rage? Mm -hmm. Interesting that you ask it, Faisal. I know with the, with the Springbok rugby players, they once played against New Zealand and the one guy, Oli Leroy, was yeah. Springbok prop. He walked off the pitch and uh, New Zealand ook asked him, why are you such an angry nation? In South Africa, we do experience a lot of road rage. I'm fortunately blessed in the fact that I'm relatively calm. <laughs> I don't get angry too often. I sometimes yeah. I get disappointed, not angry. I think it's important for us to recognize that conflict can only continue to exist with participation. So breathe, relax, uh, rather shake your head in silence, uh, consider the fact that the other person might have made a mistake. Yes. And if he did not make a mistake, consider the fact that he might be intellectually challenged. But don't uh, burst out in road rage. Okay. Now, obviously, like we mentioned earlier in a program, that many South Africans will be driving to their destinations. Um, if a person is driving to their holiday destination, normally it's Durban or Cape Town, even Port Elizabeth or anywhere they might be going, um, how should they prepare for this journey? I think best way is we look at both quickly, uh, basically with road crashes, we look at three causes of road crashes. The biggest one is the human factor, the other one is vehicle factors, and then there's environmental factors. With environmental factors, we can't do much. That's normally where there's trees falling over. Uh, also animals crossing the road, yes. uh, something in South Africa which you have to be stay alert if you're going to drive that route late at night, mm -hmm. then it's also worthwhile to reduce your speed. Also with crime we find that a lot of offences have been broken down, so uh, uh, that's something for driving at night. We, we urge people or advise people, if possible, not to drive at night. And now in America, they say that the risk factor is about three times more yes. for road crashes at night than during daytime. I think in South Africa, with crime, it may even be more. Uh, but there's not a lot that we can do about the environmental factors. With the vehicle factors, ensure that your vehicle is in a roadworthy condition. Have your windscreen checked, have your shocks, your brakes, your wiper blades checked to ensure that your vehicle is not going to break down. And then as you prepare for the travel, there's nothing better than 
to start the journey with a good night's rest before. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot beat the biological clock. We always say, if you're tired, stop, rest. Don't try to fight the driver fatigue. Plan in advance that you can rest every two hours, that you can make a safe stop at a safe place before you continue your, your journey. Uh, make sure, once again, with a vehicle side, that your vehicle is roadworthy, that it's not overloaded. If we go on holiday, often we, we have overloaded vehicles. And then drive with patience. Don't set yourself a specific time target that you need to re reach your destination. You know what happens when uh, there's a vehicle accident and there's a huge time delay. If you have to go to a specific place and you have to be there a specific time, you are going to become impatient and you're going to take these risks. So make sure that you are physically uh, in a good condition, that you have had a good rest. Yeah. And then, most importantly, obey the rules of the road. Right. Do not drive distracted. Do not drive having taken any alcohol or any, uh, yeah, any, any alcohol. Uh, ensure that uh, even people in the vehicle do not distract you. But especially see your cellular phones, don't text and drive, don't uh, get into social media, drive and drive only. Okay, we just got a few minutes left. If there's one message that you can tell our viewers to stay safe on the road, along with details of where they can get information on Arrive Life. Yeah. Uh, what we will do, we will share also on the Twitter handle. Yes. It's uh, at underscore arrive alive. We have a nice following there, but we will share there from all the other toll concessionaires yes. uh, information. And that's not only crash information, but also, for instance, where there are weather, where there are sudden uh, mist, misty conditions, where the uh, maybe tra uh, traffic congestion because of a road crash. We'll share that information on the Twitter handle. We'll share information on the Arrival Life Road Safety website. We would like to urge people, we'll also make available the normal 20 questions, yes. uh, over 20 tips that we have for road safety during this time. Uh, I think most important is we need to obey the rules of the road. That's the most important one. If we obey the rules of the road, uh, we have got a much better chance of arriving safely. Mm -hmm. And also remember that there may be others who do not obey the rules of the yes. road. And for that, you need to drive defensively. Mm -hmm. So defensive driving starts by buckling up. Not only the driver, but also all the passengers, all the adults, and also children in child safety seats. Buckle up. Uh, you've got a much better chance, if there is a collision, that you may survive a collision. Mm -hmm. Uh, don't take chances. We need all your focus on the road. Some other people may be distracted. Uh, consider the whole time that and anticipate that others may be right. not obeying the rules right. of the road. Johan Jong, absolute pleasure to have you on Perspective this evening and all the best with the campaigns. Thanks a lot. Unfortunately, we've come to the ed end of another edition of Perspective. Remember, you can interact with me by sending me a mail on faisal at itvnetworks.tv, drop me a tweet on fazy 143 or even comment on facebook.com forward slash Faisal Patel. For myself, Faisal Patel, and the team here at ITV, via Manila, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. أناج الحق في ليل لهيم أصدق النجوى وأدعو الله من قلب سليم يطلب التقوى أناج الحق في ليل لهيم أصدق النجوى وأدعو الله من قلب سليم يطلب التقوى عصيب فاكشف البلوى فيا ربي انا عبد لرد الطيب لا يقوى